I'd like to take you back to the 26th of July, 1944. Royal Air Force Benson in Oxfordshire, 544 Squadron, uh, which is a Mosquito Photo Reconnaissance Squadron. The Mosquito was ideal for this mission. It was all made of wood, and these photo reconnaissance aircraft never carried any armaments, and they really relied specifically on the speed and the height that they could actually travel. On that particular day, a Flight Lieutenant Hall and a Pilot Officer Loban, Loban being the navigator, took off from Benson on a mission to photograph battle damage over Munich. They carried on over to Munich in a fairly uneventful flight. They arrived over Munich and carried out their mission. But as they turned round, Loban, who sat in the, in the nose of the aircraft here, actually looks down at the, uh, the city of Munich and he sees this object coming up from below towards them at speed. He couldn't recognise it straight away, so he says to Hall, I believe there's a bandit coming up from the ground towards us at speed. Hall was quite confident, he was in the fastest aircraft as far as he was aware, and they were at a height where they could evade most uh, German fighters. However, this aircraft, this object, is now coming up at 3,900 feet a minute, Loban can now see this object a little bit more. He can see it's not got any propellers. Not seen anything like that ever, ever before. They were aware that the Germans had some sort of jet fighter or jet technology, but they had never seen anything like that at all. So this object was totally unknown to them. As it gets closer and closer, Hall is getting a little bit more um, anxious. So he starts to put the throttle forward a bit and the mixture and he's putting a lot more speed onto this, this aircraft. The aircraft's made of wood. It's starting to shake. It's starting to rattle. Hall very quickly realised that the turning circle of this unknown object, which turns out to be a Messerschmitt 262, is very slow. Hall tries to use this to his advantage. The pilot flying the 262 was an ace Luftwaffe pilot, Lieutenant Al Alfred Schreiber. He, he counteracted Hall's um, actions and he eventually came up behind um, Hall and from below, firing his cannons. Hall heard a bang, huge bang, and the aircraft started becoming un unresponsive. Um, he asked Loban to have a look what, if he could look around, see what damage. Loban opened the inner hatch to the Mosquito and found that the outer hatch had actually been ripped away. Now we're not sure whether this was ripped away by cannon fire or by the sheer way Paul had been throwing the Mosquito around. At any rate, it had caused damage to the aircraft. The door had gone back, hit the wing and hit the tail of the uh, Mosquito. Paul decided, looked around, he needed to escape. He saw a, a, a cloud base and hid there for a short time. Um, when he reappeared, the 262 had disappeared. Loban checks his charts. There is no way they're going to make it back to the UK. So they decide to head for Fermo in Italy, a captured uh, airbase there. They landed and we helped, were able to report that they had seen this first jet fighter in action. Alfred Schreiber, for his part of it, he lost sight of the uh, Mosquito, however he saw the door come off and he saw it hit the Mosquito and he saw the Mosquito become unresponsive. And as far as he was concerned, he claimed that as the first official jet fighter kill in the whole world. Lieutenant Schreiber um, carried on his career for another couple of months during the war. Unfortunately he was the victim of a tragic accident when on returning to his home base the aircraft was coming into land and his nose wheel, as it touched the ground, folded and the aircraft tumbled over, tragically killing Lieutenant Schreiber. The Messerschmitt ME262 I'm stood in front of was built in December 1944. It was test flown in March 1945 and allocated to JG7 later on in that month. You'll see here that on the nose there, she used to carry a, a camera for intelligence purposes when flying uh, on operations. You will see that her whole shape 
she has been described as looking like a shark and I think that's a, a good ana analogy of what she actually looks like. As we go past down the aircraft you'll see the two engines on the side and you'll see that the wings are slightly swept back. This, uh, this was actually done by accident because when the Jumo 004 Yonkers engines turned up they found out that they were too heavy for the actual design of the wing that Willie Messerschmitt had actually envisaged. So when he put them on, the, the centre of gravity for the aircraft was not correct. So what he did was quite simple really. He made them into, he, he swept them back. So the centre of gravity actually changed. And by doing that, he actually made the aircraft better, more unique, it flew better, and it was um, more capable, uh, all by accident. Um, well, after the war, um, the design was actually used um, on the F-86 and you can see that in our Cold War hangar at this present moment in time and you'll see clearly the swept back um, wing of that aircraft. One unique thing about this aircraft is that it did not have any speed brakes. It did have some leading edge slats, as you can see here, which were actually used for landing. They they reduced the speed but the pilot had to be really capable at managing his speed in the air when you think this aircraft could do, could do 540 plus miles an hour. Pilots were drawn from a lot of squadrons within the, uh, the German Air Force. They were drawn from bomber squadrons, fighter squadrons and the actual time that the pilots were supposed to have was about 10 hours conversion from aircraft to aircraft. However, in reality, pilots were actually turning up and getting straight into these aircraft and flying them. If you'd like to come and view our de Havilland Mosquito and our Messerschmitt ME262, please come down. You're more than welcome at the Royal Air Force Museum, Cosford.